All roads in the Big East lead here to Mason, Ohio. Prasco Park sets the stage for a battle of the top two teams in regular season play. UConn, the Big East regular season champs, chomping at the bit to keep their bats red hot at the dish. Creighton has eyes on the prize as well, out to overcome not only the Huskies, but season-long obstacles as well. What are those obstacles? Uh, Mother Nature, and she is back with a vengeance in Ohio. Buckle up and bundle up. Baseball is next. And welcome to Prasco Park here in Mason, Ohio, just outside of Cincinnati. We've got a good one here in the Big East Baseball Conference Championships. The Creighton Blue Jays taking on the Yukon Huskies, one against two, as we continue on here in Mason, Ohio. Hi, everybody. I'm Bob Brandon, along with John Phantom. Mike Schmaltz will join us as well from the blustery dugout. It is cold and windy again today. This tournament has already been TBA as we have gone along, John. But now we've got Creighton and UConn going head-to-head. -head. These two teams can didn't get to play each other during the regular season. Now they get that opportunity. This feels like years in the making in just the first season that these two teams could play in the Big East. It's the first ever meeting between Creighton and UConn and Bob after these two teams were unable to play their series in Omaha earlier this season due to UConn's COVID-19 issues. We get the best two in the Big East to decide that first ticket to the title game. I mentioned that this has been a lot of TBA, a lot of moving parts here at this tournament. Mother Nature was unkind yesterday. Rain, wind, and cold. They played the only game yesterday, started it just after 10 p.m. local time, finished it at 1.15 this morning. So that game eliminated Seton Hall. John Fanta knows firsthand because he was here all day. So Xavier continues. Uh, Xavier continues. Seton Hall is out. Now these two teams will play to see who has a shot at the championship on Sunday. Really interesting dynamic because typically when you lose that first game, you're stuck having to have the pressure on you the rest of the way. Xavier gets to sit a little bit here. They'll put their hands back and say, hey, we want Creighton and UConn to go as long as possible. Take a look at the Blue Jays lineup. They come into this one 24 and 13. Parker Upton will lead things off the right fielder, followed by Andrew Meggs. Roden, terrific season for this young freshman. Where do you see him at the dish? Then Ryan Mantle in the cleanup spot. Dax Roper is the designated hitter, followed by Sterling Hayes, the first baseman. The catcher, he's a good one as well. He's behind the dish, batting seventh. Then Will Hannafin and Nolan Clifford, and they will face a second team All Big East pitcher the right-hander Ben Kasparius Ben Kasparius a North Carolina transfer the thought in mind actually after the COVID-19 season got stopped uh, last year in 2020 Kasparius had to sit out due to transfer rules Bob and there was a thought that he would never pitch for the UConn Huskies he was MLB draft eligible but Ben Kasparius is here. He's ready for this stage. And here's the Huskies defensively. This is a, a great defensive team. You think about the Fedco brothers and the Winkle brothers. UConn, they just have this feel right now for a team that is destined for a championship and more. We'll see if Creighton can stop them. But the Huskies have won eight in a row. They've won 26 of their last 31 games, Bob Brainerd. And over the last six games, this UConn team has scored 74 runs. So you talked about that Creighton lineup. The Blue Jays really need to try to set the tone here because the Huskies are feeling as confident not only as any team in the conference, but when you win 26 of your last 31 games, any team in college baseball. That will be the dialogue in this one. Can the Jays cool off these UConn bats? John mentioned it. They have been striking the ball with authority. Ball one low, and we are underway as Upton leads it off for the Jays. Poke foul by Upton. Parker a little banged up, not running well of late, so like to do nothing but find some green and not have to try to leg something out to get to first base. Two and one now. 
Ben Kasparius coming off a good outing against Seton Hall. Six innings, just allowed one earned run. He struck out seven, walked one. He pounds the strike zone. Like there, two and two. The umpires in this one, Brian Drury is calling balls and strikes. Rick Allen's at first, Joe Cruz at second, and Steve Leonardo over at third. 2-2, two -two. foul back. The dimensions here at Prasco, 320 down each line. 380 in the gaps, and the deepest part is left center, where it's 400. Center field, right center, just a tad over. You can poke it out of here at 385. Count goes full on Upton. Well, this is familiar for Parker Upton. He had three free passes, three walks for Creighton against Seton Hall on Thursday. Swing and a miss there. Gasparius dials in for strikeout number one. Gasparius just gears back, goes with the fastball in the outer half. Too much for Upton to handle. There's not much that Upton can do. It was just a tad off the plate. It's perfect location from Ben Kasparius. Just starting right where UConn left off. One away, here's Andrew Meggs. Meggs has been a pleasant surprise at the dish. Hit 333 during the season. This is a Creighton team that entered this tournament, only hitting 268 as a team, but like you said, they, they have had some pleasant surprises emerge. A comebacker, easy play for Ben, two away. And this is concerning, and yeah, we're two outs into the game, but if you're Creighton, you would have liked to try to, to get the energy going your way. It just feels like this UConn team is a freight train, and I think that it sounds cliche, but the most important half inning of this game is going to be the bottom of the first inning. And I say that because this UConn team, they scored in each of the first six innings against Xavier on Thursday night. Yeah, they've been the table setters, John. They, they, they've set the tone in these games. And then the bats just feast on one another. It's been contagious offensively for the Huskies. Well said. 1-0. To Roden, make it 2-0. Biggie's freshman of the year right here. When you hit over 400, that's an easy selection for the young man out of Wisconsin. Creighton head coach Ed Service in his 18th season told us that Alan Roden is the biggest surprise of his career. There's a strike. Caught the corner. I mean, you go and get a freshman, you don't expect them to do a lot no matter what the resume said in high school. Allen attended Middleton High School, just outside of Madison, Wisconsin. And the kid could hit there. But instant results, like what he has done, phenomenal. Leads the team in runs, average, hits, doubles, home runs, RBI. I'm out of breath. <laughs> and working the count here, three and one. That's a piece. In a season like this one, too, to emerge in the midst of all the declines, the stoppages, the, the negative, the chaos. It has been chaotic. Did I mention chaos? Somehow the roads have led us both to here in this booth. Amazing, isn't it? And Roden draws a walk. Free pass, man aboard with two down. That's something this Creighton team does very well. They battle. We've already seen two full counts in this first inning. That's a really good sign. For the Blue Jays, that's now their 12th walk of this tournament after they found a way to grind out 11 free passes against Seton Hall Thursday. They only had seven hits, Bob, but those hits came in timely fashion off the walks. Ryan Mantle now. Got a piece of that one. Mantle, second team all Big East. Having a solid final weeks of the regular season, trying to propel himself to continue on here in Mason. I think Ryan Mantle's Creighton's 
second most dangerous threat for an opposing pitcher right now. Mantle was real good the other night. Seems like ages ago now, doesn't it? It does. Three for four. Had a two-run base knock for the Blue Jays. And he is feeling himself at 352 in that cleanup spot. This is his first Big East tournament, oddly enough. He's a senior, Bob. But last year, the season gets halted. In 2019, he had to watch from the stands because of an injury. And he watched the Blue Jays win the Big East and then nearly win a regional in Corvallis. Ooh. 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 Gasparius was sidestepping his way to the dugout. He thought inning over. Looks a little bit low on the knees, not by much. Pat Winkle striking the pose there, trying to induce the strike. One, two, fouled off. Pat Winkle is everything you want in a catcher. He is steady Eddie back there. So I appreciate the, the slight frame job he made. I actually agree, though. Just a little bit low. Just got to keep that consistent behind the plate. Set up outside, and Kasparius hit the target. But Mantle didn't fish. It's 2-2. Two and two. Runner Roden over at first base, drew a two-out walk. Mantle ready. Kasparius as well. Runner goes, throw down. In time! What a throw by Winkle. Tag applied in the nick of time. Pat Winkle is exactly what you want in the catcher, Bob. We just talked about it. He's got a gun, a hose to second. And the Huskies come up with the defense. If your money is working toward the same goals, why keep it in different places? SoFi is a one-stop shop for your finances, designed to work better together. Spend with SoFi and get cashback rewards that automatically go toward your goals, like investing in stocks, ETFs, and crypto. That's better together. Or pay down your SoFi debt sooner. That's better together. And that's how SoFi is helping millions get their money right. To the dish come the Connecticut Huskies in their lineup today. Kyler Fedko to lead it off, followed by Chris Winkle. Stock, Pat Winkle, the catcher who made that terrific throw down to second in the cleanup spot. Then Christian Fedko, Crawford the first baseman, Langer the DH today, Brown the third baseman, and Butchling the shortstop. Jonah Smith on the hill, the right-hander. His numbers, John Phantom. Jonah Smith. That 6-4 and four record, talking with that service, he said that it is Smith's time to put together his best performance of the season. He's going to have his hands full today. He's a power pitcher. Bob, he loves to go to that fastball up the ladder, so I'm really intrigued to see Jonah Smith's fastball and the command of it against a lineup in the Huskies that has combined for 74 runs in the last six games. You've got power pitching for Smith against power hitting for the Huskies. 74 and six, is that a lot? Whew. And it starts at the top with Kyler Fedko. My goodness, they have been feasting at the dish of late. Fedko leads it off, nods his head, that was a strike from Jonah Smith. You see the numbers just tick below after the action the other night, just tick below the 400 mark. One and one. That's what Fedco does. Kyler Fedco sees the ball all the way 
to the plate. So when you said he nodded in approval, it's almost like he is judging a pitcher when he's at the dish. As good as he was, and he hit 402 in the regular season, 444 in Big East play. As good as he was, he was benched. Benched! The player of the year, three weeks into the season. Strikeouts were piling up at an alarming rate. And they, they, they sat him down, they dismantled the swing, watched video, made adjustments, and the results speak for themselves. Big cut there, got a piece, Vilch just hung on. Big punch out there for Jonah Smith. That's how he wants to start. He took something off of it that time. And the scout on him is, hey, he's a power pitcher. Love the movement there. That looked like a changeup that just had some late movement on the outside corner. Saw Fedko look back going, what the heck was that? <laughs> Strikeout, Kyler. <laughs> One away, here's Chris Winkle. Way outside, 1-0. He was thinking, that's not what the coaching staff told us this guy does. No. Winkle, a first team all Big Easter. Fifth year grad student. And the power numbers exploded off the bat of Winkle this year. 11 of his career, 18 home runs this season in 2021. He's going out with a bang, John. He reached the 200 career hit milestone earlier this year at St. John's. He's got the power. Left field, Roden circles under. Makes the grab two away. And now Eric Stock. You mentioned John Fanta. This bottom of the first would be key for Creighton. Getting out of here alive. Not letting UConn pile up a big crooked number in the bottom of the first. And so far, Jonah Smith taking care of business. Two up and two down. Jonah Smith looks like the senior that he is. Just take a look at that face. He's got his game face on. Stock is one tough out right now. Want to notice Stock, another first team all Big East player. Well, he reached base every time he was up on Thursday against Napier. They didn't pitch to him once. They intentionally walked him, but two walks, two hits. This kid is as confident as any hitter at the plate right now for UConn. Massive cut there, one and one. I was in the Huskies dugout Thursday night and Stock was loud. He was fired up when they did not pitch to him and the Huskies just moved the line. Because you go, you're not pitching to, to Eric Stock to pitch to Pat Winkle. I mean, that, that's, that's tough. Suicidal. Foul back, one and two. Jim Pender says, at times, Eric Stock is the best hitter on the team because he doesn't try to do too much. He'll, he'll try to line a baseball, try to hit the gaps. Right now, his job, just try to get on base. But he's sitting one, two. And he got him, Jonah Smith. Some heat with some movement away from Stock. Three up, three down, and we go to the second inning. Scoreless here in Mason, Ohio. We are many. We are part of something. A force. Bigger than all of us. Our distinct fingerprints collectively shaping and forever changing. What makes UConn? UConn. Forever making our mark. 
forever making UConn a part of us. Blankets and layers are in demand here in Ohio this afternoon. Time now to bring in our layered up third member of our broadcast team, Mike Schmaltz. Hey guys, you having fun? We've already seen some big plays on both sides today. Talked to both coaches before this game. Weather really not a concern. They both played in weather like this throughout the season. They've seen this, albeit in March. They didn't expect it here in May, but they're not worried about that. Highly anticipated first matchup between these two teams. They didn't get to play in the regular season. For Ed Service, he said his team knows the importance of this game. He knows that they got to sell out to win it. And if anything, he has to slow his team down a little bit. For Jim Penders yesterday, they took out some trial memberships at a local gym and they're going to have a three-day membership. So they got their lift in. They came over here, and they hit. I asked him if he thought it might slow down his offensive continuity. He said, nope, offensive is contagious. All we can do is what we could do yesterday. It's about the best you could do with a day like that. Thank you, Mike. Three-day membership, huh? Three-day trial membership. Let's see. They could, they could use it today. They could use it tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, that'll work. It's hard to sit still. It is, and I would venture to say that that gym's probably had the most activity it's had in the last 14 months. Yeah, no doubt. When UConn walked in there. But look, you got to find ways to kill some time. And the weather was nasty. The, the blessing for these two teams is they knew early there's no way they're going to play this game. It was supposed to be a 6.30 local time start before the rains came early and often in the day, so the decision was made. Let's try to get one game in. That time was fluid. That time kept moving, and John and Mike were here for the 10 p.m. local time when Seton Hall and Xavier tangled. Three and two to Mantle. He gets a redo after Roden was thrown out on the base paths. Launches this one, but foul. Credit is warranted for the Big East Conference director of this championship, James Green, and then the two managers last night, Rob Shepard of Seton Hall, Billy O'Connor of Xavier, because through the dialogue, that's inside for the walk, a leadoff walk for the Jays, through all that discussion of when can we find a window? What you don't want to have happen is you don't want to start a game, then have rain, and then have your pitchers get jeopardized. They found a window. And I think that, Bob, even though we ended after 1 a.m. last night, you got a game in. Having to play three today would have been a lot and, and definitely would have altered the course of crowning a champion just with how much baseball would have been played today. So credit to everyone involved for finding a window without rain and playing last night. Indeed. Double dip today as Roper takes a strike. He's the designated hitter. The winner here punches their ticket into the championship tomorrow afternoon. And I hate to say the loser. I'll just say the defeated team, John. <laughs> they will have a short break. They'll get the field manicured here. Bouncer Ooh. to second, double play ball. Fedco to Bushling, and then wild throw pulled Crawford off the bag. So they get the lead runner one away. So the defeated team will then play the Musketeers. Later this afternoon, schedule about 4 p.m. And that will turn into an elimination game. But as you said, John, imagine starting this game in the morning hours, then playing a second game, then a third under the lights. That would be tough on everybody. Hayes the batter now. Sterling Hayes, transfer from Vanderbilt. Bouncing ball, just foul. Boy, Brown was on his horse trying to snag it if it stayed fair. Hayes played shortstop for the Jays early in the season, but they switched him over to the first base bag. They did, and that opened the door for Nolan Clifford, who's only the second true freshman to play shortstop for Creighton in program history. Now the umpires 
are going to huddle up here. I thought that might have been a fair ball. It was darn close. And again, you saw Brown with the quick giddy up to try to get there and make a play in case it hugged the line and stayed on the right side. And the umpires, after their confab behind the mound, wow. say, nope, foul ball. That is tight. So one and one. That one lifted foul. We, we do have replay capability, John Fanta. There are certain things you can and cannot challenge. So that will be a point of discussion if the head coaches come out and they have something they want to question. The umpires will say, well, you can or you can't. As Hayes cuts through it, swing and a miss. Two strikeouts now for Kasparius, two away. Kasparius takes something off here. Goes on the inner corner, and Hayes just out in front. And right now, Sterling Hayes, he went without a hit Thursday. You could sense from his reaction, it looks like he's battling with himself right now at the plate. Kasparius, really good location on that. That was low. And a massive cut there by Vilches. It really is a luxury for Jim Penders that he can give the ball to Ben Kasparius in a game two of a postseason. Because Kasparius is more than capable of being a number one, but that's just how good Austin Peterson is for the Huskies, and he was. He was great on Thursday night. You've got somebody in Peterson who started at Purdue in the Big Ten. You've got somebody in Kasparius who was at North Carolina. High level experience coming to stores and delivering. Bouncing ball to third. Brown plays it, tosses it, side retired. Nothing across for the Blue Jays in their half of the second inning. No score here in Mason, Ohio. If your money is working toward the same goals, why keep it in different places? SoFi is a one-stop shop for your finances, designed to work better together. Spend with SoFi and get cashback rewards that automatically go toward your goals, like investing in stocks, ETFs, and crypto. That's better together. Or pay down your SoFi debt sooner. That's better together. And that's how SoFi is helping millions get their money right. Bottom two, Huskies second turn at the dish. No score here in this game to see who punches their ticket to the championship on Sunday afternoon. We won't uh, beat. Okay, you heard Mike. Mike, you got a little uh, more insight there on the fair foul decision. Yeah, absolutely. Just talked with Steve Leonardo, the third base umpire, and you can review fair foul if it's after the bag. So that's why they had the conference amongst the umpires to figure out if they wanted to take a look at that because if you can see Brown slid towards the line, he was well behind the bag when he made that attempt. Mike, would that have had to be formally challenged in that instance, or did you get the sense that they were coming to discuss that themselves? All right, Michael, thank you for that update. Yeah, as John mentioned, the replay a couple times, it was it was tight. It was close. But foul by a skosh. Pat Winkle, Christian Fedko. Crawford. Four, five, six here for the Huskies in the bottom of the second. One and one. Jonah Smith. Very good. One, two, three. Easy frame for him. 
in the bottom of the first. Roll it to first. Hayes gobbles it up, says I'll take it, and does. One away. Batter will be Christian Fedko. There was so much buildup for this game. These two teams didn't play in the regular season. And they both have chirped and talked throughout the season about who's better. It's sports. It's, it's the way it's supposed to be. These two teams need each other. In this conference, UConn and Creighton could be a great rivalry. And I think that it could elevate this league in terms of NCAA tournament talk. The Blue Jays won the Big East tournament two years ago. They're the reigning champions. The Huskies, the last time they were in this tournament in 2013, they won it. So these two programs put a lot into baseball, Bob. I think it's great for the league. And I think early on we're seeing the intensity of this. If you're a hitter, you're at the plate thinking, okay, I'm going to change things. I'm going to be the first guy to make something happen. What, what needs to happen is, hey, take a step back. Remember who you are try to get going, but both these pitchers have come out firing. 1-1 one, one from Smith, and Fedko tried to tattoo it to left. You know, I asked Jim Penders, you glad to be back in the Big East? Oh yeah, I mean, that was the short answer. The longer answer was that, you know, the Huskies are good for the Big East and vice versa. He said that in the AAC, you know, they didn't worry about the neighborhood, meaning the teams around them, just take care of our own house. And that's the philosophy going back to the Big East now. You just worry about your house, but the Yukon house will be good for teams like Creighton and everybody else in the Big East because, hey, it's somebody else in the standings you want to shoot for. Another elite program and another elite matchup and some rivalries that can be renewed. Absolutely. I think back to when you're growing up. When you're in the neighborhood and there's a new family that moves in on the block and they got a kid your age and you're nine years old and you play hoops, you want to battle up against him. Yeah. You love those after-school matchups in the front yard. But as Pender said, you take care of your own house, right? You, you dominate in your driveway. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the neighborhood will benefit. That's a strikeout, Fedco said it got a piece of me, not the bat. Home plate umpire Brian Drury said, nope, piece of the bat, hung on by Vilches. Or maybe no piece of the bat upon further review. But either way, strikeout registered for Smith, his third of the day. So two up and two down for Crawford, the first baseman. That was power pitching from Jonah Smith. The faith that he has in his fastball to go up the ladder. Reggie with a big windmill cut there. You have to take a different approach against Reggie Crawford. He's a good fastball hitter. That's why he's one of the better prospects that scouts are here looking at. But 52 strikeouts, just 16 walks. And on the plus side, 56 RBI led that category in the Big East. So when he's on, he's on. He can deliver in bunches. Sitting 1-1 here against Smith. Did he check in time? No. Steve Leonardo, third base umpire, says he went around. It's one and two. That's terrific pitch sequencing from Jonah Smith. He started Crawford out with an off-speed one outside and low in the zone. He goes up the ladder with the heater. Smith. Vilches will finish. Throw down the first. Back-to-back -back K's and four in the books for Jonah Smith. Keeping the UConn hitters off balance and off stride. And the Jays matching zeros on the scoreboard here in Mason. No scores. We head to the third. If your money is working toward the same goals, why keep it in different places? 
SoFi is a one-stop shop for your finances, designed to work better together. Spend with SoFi and get cashback rewards that automatically go toward your goals, like investing in stocks, ETFs, and crypto. That's better together. Or pay down your SoFi debt sooner. That's better together. And that's how SoFi is helping millions get their money right. Welcome back to April Baseball. I'm sorry, checks calendar. <laughs> Memorial Day weekend. Boy, we started off this tournament, John Fanta, Thursday. Gorgeous day and evening temperatures in the 80s. And we thought, how lucky are we? And then Mother Nature said, not that lucky. Nope, not that lucky. But it feels like October. There's a chill in the air. You've got the top two teams in the Big East all season now squaring off, and we've got a pitcher's duel developing. Ben Kasparius for UConn. He's come out firing, as has Jonah Smith. And speaking of pitching, we've got somebody who knows about it. Yeah, Dennis Rasmussen joining us on the headset. He's all bundled up. I love, I love the parka because that is appropriate attire, Dennis, today. Yeah, I, uh, I'm glad I threw that in from uh, Detroit. But when you when you live in Michigan, you're always prepared. <laughs> yeah, you know. So, so Dennis, um, when you take a look at these young men out there, boy, the, the state of baseball, the state of college baseball, there's a lot of talent, not only here at the Big East Tournament, but there's a lot of talent nationwide. Kids are playing at such a young age, they are so ready for the bigger stage when they get to college, aren't they? They really are. It's, uh, it's been fun to watch. I uh, will be coaching this summer in the Appalachian League at Bluefield, and first time in 20 years, so finally back in coaching. So I was out scouting uh, Big Ten baseball this last month, and boy, it's impressive. It's awesome, Dennis. John Fante here. You have a, a fascinating story that I just love in that at Creighton, you played for the basketball team as a six man off the bench. Then for the baseball team, you're pitching. And as somebody who was a Blue Jay and now sees what Ed Service has done with this Creighton program, what are your thoughts on the Creighton baseball program and the way that it's led? Well, it's, uh, Ed's done a great job, but it, uh, it started back in, you know, Jim Hendry and really Jerry Barty, who I played for. and. Uh, Coach Hendry and then Jack Dom and it's just evolved and it's it just makes me uh, so proud to see it develop and then once they join the Big East and uh, you know it's such a bigger stage and especially watching the basketball team as, as closely as I do and Coach Altman and Willis Reed and just the tradition that's been there it's been uh, it's been a lot of fun to watch and very proud as a former player. Hey, Dennis, it's Mike Schmaltz. How valuable is this type of tournament to come and, and just evaluate talent? You've got some four great teams here, and you can look at them all at one time. Yeah, it is great. You know, it would be even better if all the teams were, <laughs> were here, but because uh, there are so many good teams uh, in the league. And, uh, and I uh, texted uh, Dave Schrag, who was my center fielder when I played here at Creighton, and, and said, hey, we miss you, buddy, uh, him being a butler and his team. But... It's, uh, it's great to see this uh, level of competition and, and uh, you know, the guys are hungry and uh, this place, I had never been to Prasco Park and I am incredibly impressed, uh, not only with the field, but the people and everything from the person that, that uh, parks your car and shows you where to park. I mean, everybody couldn't be nicer, so doing a great job. So kudos to, uh, to this. Uh, Clifford draws a walk here, so back to the top of the order and up. And Dennis Rasmussen joining us here on the broadcast, former Blue Jay, former major leaguer. When you look at collegiate talent, what specifically do you hone in on? What, what do you try to break down when you're looking at a young man and his ceiling going forward? Well, you see him uh, 
pitch. What's great is you see them at a, at a higher level and playing in a uh, or pitching in a in a tournament situation, especially against a top team like the Jays are with UConn. But in this uh, at this level of a level of play, you can see the guys. Tournament baseball is different than playing in front of you know 20, 30 people. Uh, you know, at home and, and stuff. When you got a few thousand people in the stands, it's, uh, you gotta, you know, the Jays are lucky because they're playing at uh, TD Ameritrade and, and uh, they draw pretty well. So, but still, it's, uh, you, got, you gotta look and see what, what these guys are able to do, pitching uh, behind in the count, uh, pitching when, you know, the games are on the line. And it tells you a lot. And the scouts that are here watching are watching all of that. Dennis, the game has changed so much over the years. What's something that when you talk to a player, maybe something that might be going away that you try to hone in on with them and say, hey, keep this in your game because it's really important? Yeah, probably the biggest thing is, you know, technology has taken over the game and there's so much information. And I know I'm going to be in the middle of that this summer and I've been trying to understand a little bit more because I have been out of the game for 20 years so I haven't been as close to it but just know enough to be dangerous of spin rates and uh, all, all the information so it's uh, you kind of gotta you gotta realize that you still gotta go out there and compete and it's one pitch at a time one hitter at a time one inning at a time as a pitcher and uh, you gotta go out there and compete every single pitch and not let down Hey, Dennis, you threw in New York, you threw here in Cincinnati, Chicago, Kansas City. You face these types of conditions before. What's important about pitching on a cold day like this with a little wind in the air? It's a, uh, I always look at it, every day is a great day to pitch, but especially when it's cold out. Um, <laughs> and uh, the, only, the only bad thing is that the guy's got aluminum bats in their hands and you're not getting the sting quite as bad when you jam a guy with a wood bat. So... Uh, <laughs> But uh, it was always a great day, and uh, I would I would go out there in short sleeves on days like this. So I'm not surprised their pitchers got <laughs> short sleeves on. It makes you it makes you look tough. Ah, you were one of those, Dennis. Yep. Dennis, thanks so much. We'll let you go get some coffee and get warm. We appreciate you stopping by for all the insight. Thanks, guys. Keep up the good work. Thank you. That's Dennis Rasmussen. Megs is the batter. Two away here for the Jays in their half of the third. And Kasparius battling here with Megs. Grounded out his first AB. I'll tell you, Dennis Rasmussen was tough. As an arm, you think about what he did at Creighton as a, as a baseball and basketball player. Just a resilient guy. Look at that, Pat Winkle sets up. Kasparius nails the target. Megs caught looking, two Ks in the books, and four on the docket for Ben Kasparius. No score, bottom three. We are many. We are part of something. A force. Bigger than all of us. Our distinct fingerprints collectively shaping and forever changing. What makes UConn, UConn. Forever making our mark. Forever making UConn a part of us. A lot of donuts here as we head to the bottom of the third inning on this overcast, chilly afternoon in Mason, Ohio. Nevertheless, fans have come prepared. They're bundled up, going with the flow. It's not raining, that's a plus. Yesterday was, uh, rain slickers were in order instead of the layers, John. It's a donut and coffee Saturday. Mm. That's the kind of Saturday it is. Love the 
dancing from the stands. These fans got energy, and it just feels like playoff baseball. Thus far, neither pitcher has showed any flaws. This has been fun to watch these two just fire. David Langer. DH here, batting seventh, Brown to follow, then Bushling. Langer's quite the story. Talk about a guy who's just, you know, didn't crawl in a hole and hide when things got rough, stayed with it, and is seeing dividends here in the late stages of the regular season and the postseason. Nice play there by Clifford to Hayes to retire Langer one away. Absolutely. Nice play by Nolan Clifford here. This is not as routine as he made it look. This is a freshman shortstop. That is not common for Creighton baseball. Took a bit of a funky hop. That throws there. And Hayes, Hayes knows all too well. I think it's interesting because Sterling Hayes was at shortstop. So it's got to help for him at first base when he's got that angle coming in. Some nasty timey up movement there from Smith. Brown got handcuffed on that swing. See the numbers on Chris. First real year on this UConn roster, as Jim Penders calls it, on the roster last season, but didn't play. He's a star high school basketball player in Connecticut, so he's just now trying to get all the baseball tools to line up and in sync. One for three on Thursday, two runs batted in. He also had a walk. Here the, not really an argument, but the case, if you will, for kids in high school play multi-sports. And, and even the coaches will say, yeah, it's a good thing. I don't want somebody going 12 months a year, 24 seven, doing one thing. They like multi-sport athletes. This one to right center, Hannafin running over, and instead Upton says, I'm right here. <laughs> and makes the crab casually two away. That was as casual of a grab out right field for a steamrolling train that was oncoming, Will Hannafan. And he's getting ready to call off Upton, and Upton's like, dude, I'm here. I got it. Two away. Good to see that they avoided contacting uh, each other. Yeah. Zach Bushling now the shortstop. Oh, great movement there, 0-1-1. I'm loving everything about Jonah Smith right now. And this kid's journey is amazing. He was a walk-on at Ambeline Christian before transferring into Creighton. Now he's pitched it in a playoff game to book his team to a championship game. And Bob, he's been fantastic. Against the top offensive team who, they're all swinging hot sticks. Not just here at the tournament, but the tail end of the regular season. Nothing but offense. Sometimes timing is a is a thing. UConn was red hot. They wanted to play yesterday with how hot they are. Bouncing ball to second. Megs will get there. Nine up and nine down. Jonah Smith doing a job on the UConn Huskies. We go to the fourth and those donuts, well, they're still on the board. If your money is working toward the same goals, why keep it in different places? SoFi is a one-stop shop for your finances, designed to work better together. Spend with SoFi and get cashback rewards that automatically go toward your goals, like investing in stocks, ETFs, and crypto. That's better together. Or pay down your SoFi debt sooner. That's better together. And that's how SoFi is helping millions get their money right.
Ben Kasparius is a Connecticut kid. He knows what UConn and the Big East is like because when he was growing up, that's what he was watching. I asked him earlier this week about what it's like for the Huskies to be back in this league. Absolutely, be, um, especially coming off of the last weekend that we had at home. Obviously, we finished 16 and one, which is pretty impressive. Um, you know, it's good to be back. I think we uh, really proved that we, you know, we are one of the best teams in the country. In the country and, um, we have a lot of momentum coming into this weekend, and I think we're going to have a lot of success for the Really has a lot of passion, and for a lot of these Connecticut kids, it's the goal of Jim Pender to always keep the best in the state with you at UConn. It really resonates uh, with these kids that grew up in the state of Connecticut because they watched Kemba Walker. They watched Gina Oriema and the, the greats of UConn women's basketball from Rebecca Lobo to Sue Bird, Diana Taurasi, all those big names. They want to be that, that name. They want to be that George Springer that UConn baseball's had before. And the list of UConn Husky terrific stars of the past. They want to write their name in this week. Roden leads it off in the fourth. Yeah, Jim Penders talked about him in, in the neighborhood and taking care of their house in the Big East. He said there's, there's all these veteran coaches that he can learn from, that the players can learn from. They can look at the program in the other dugout and watch how they go about their business. Not that UConn doesn't have their own program, their own way of going about it. As Roden off the end of the bat goes oppo for a base hit. The first of the afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It took us all the way to the fourth inning to get there. But Roden's aboard with a leadoff single for the Jays. Great piece of hitting. That's exactly why Alan Roden is the Big East freshman of the year. He goes the other way. That's adjustments from your first at bat. And the Blue Jays, they've had base runners via the walk. Now they get one via a hit. Let's see some small ball. Ryan Mantle squares. Inside it goes, 1 0. Oh. By the way, Ed Service said Alan Roden hits the ball as hard as anyone he has coached. This is a freshman. And you saw it there off the end of the bat. It had some juice on it. Runner was going. It's fouled back. Mano walked back in the second inning. But Kasparius took care of business by retiring the next three. Roden is four for four in the stolen base department. Squares fielded by Brown. He'll go to first to get the out there. Brown came in charging in right place, right time to make the play. Sacrifice complete by Mantle. Well, there was a thought in mind from Brown at first to go to second, but have to simplify things there and just get the out at first. Because the way that Ben Kasparis is throwing, he's only allowed the one hit. You'll put the faith in him against the next four hitters for Creighton, which nobody's hitting over 221 in this group. And you also put the faith that your bats will find that groove once again. As good as Jonas Smith has pitched so far in this one for Creighton. UConn bats, they know their offense. It will come to life here. Dax Roper came to life for Creighton in the ninth inning on Thursday against Seton Hall. A double to left that brought in two and cut the lead to one. Bob Roper had been 0 for his last 17 before that at bat which he broke through for the Blue Jays. And Ed Service said, we're going to need offense from Dax in Ohio. It's the guys who are struggling, the guys who you aren't counting on offensively. You need them to be that X factor here. That one fouled back, 2-1. and one. 
Well, one of the things with Dax Roper is he's a guy who hits a lot of fly balls. And at TD Ameritrade Park, <laughs> it's hard to hit one yeah. for real power. It's hard to hit a home run out of there. And if you hit one that stays in the air long enough, somebody's going to get to it. Now, Prasco Park is a bit smaller. We've only seen just a bit. We've only seen one home run here this week. Nice pitch there, two and two. And the wind is blowing in, John. It's, it's blowing in from left center. So any righties like Roper, it's going to take a poke. You're going for a gap here. UConn shaded over to the left. Their outfield shaded to the left side. Their infield is as well. There's a right center gap for Dax Roper. He can go the other way. 2-2. Two, two. Big cut. Winkle will finish off the K with a throw to first. Two away. Roden stays put at second. There's something to be said right now about the fact that these two teams are seeing each other for the first time this year. That's just a great breaking ball by Kasparius for his fifth strikeout. And it's advantage pitchers. What we saw on Thursday was two matchups, Seton Hall Creighton and then Xavier UConn. Both those teams in those matchups had seen each other four times, not the normal three, four times in this COVID-19 season. It's game five. UConn showed that they had seen Nick Zwack. But both Seton Hall and Creighton showed they had seen each other's starting pitchers. And I think, Bob, that that something that, that has to get brought up is you could watch all the video you want. Right now we're watching advantage pitching because these two teams haven't seen each other at all in their history. Hayes scoots out of the way. They were scheduled a series mid-April in Omaha. Didn't happen. COVID issues for UConn. Creighton was able to scramble and get two games played at home against San Jose State. But this matchup, highly anticipated series matchup, never happened. And Hayes spins and takes one for the team. So two on with two down. And Vilches will try to do some damage here. Just slipped on the hand a little bit. Kasparius knew it when he threw it. You can see his facial reaction. He just grimaced. So for the Blue Jays, an opportunity here for Prasco David. Vilches was the star for the Jays two years ago. Big opportunity here. Goes after the first pitch. High in the sky. Foul territory and out of play. Vilches is another guy that Ed Service says we need some offense from him. It has been a struggle for the young man at the plate. Now, good behind the dish, you bet. But offensively, he's had a hard time finding consistent ABs. And again, it's that unexpected guy, and here's an opportunity. Can he be an X factor? A lot of fly balls. The good news, two sack flies for Ribbies on Thursday. Down 0-2. And Kasparius here has him. He has him right where he wants him. He throws a heater on the outer half. I would go right back to that breaking ball. You have three pitches to work with here. If you're Kasparius, Bob, and you still have another base open, you go to that breaking ball. Do not give him a fastball to hit into the air. The 0-2. Got him. With a tail on it. You called it, my friend. Kasparius leaves two stranded by the Jays. And we head to the bottom of the fourth, still scoreless.
though we are many, we are part of something. A force. Bigger than all of us. Our distinct fingerprints collectively shaping and forever changing. What makes UConn, UConn. Forever making our mark. Forever making UConn a part of us. It's a day for baseball fans here in Mason, Ohio. Also a day for the Hardy. If you didn't bring enough long sleeve garments, or if shorts were the only item in your duffel bag, you are out of luck today. But these fans came prepared, as you can see. Windy and blustery, but not as bad, John Fanta. Yesterday was windier and blusterier and rainy. It felt like that we were in Northeast Ohio, not Southern Ohio. It felt like we were right off Lake Erie with the way that the rain was coming down. And you see the wind, we're getting gusts around 15 to 20. But last night we were talking about 40 to 50. It was wild, wild stuff. Yeah, and to recap, there were two games scheduled yesterday. They got just one in. That was Xavier and Seton Hall, the elimination game. It was first scheduled for 2.30. It ended up being played at 10 p.m., finishing earlier this morning. You heard me right. <laughs> Jonah Smith has faced all nine Huskies. He's retired all nine. And now we go to the bottom of the fourth, top of the order, and Kyler Fedko, who struck out his first A.B. What time did you get out of here last night? I left early and enjoyed the broadcast on the Big East Digital Network, my friend. Right from the hotel room. Yeah. Warmer that way. <laughs> you and Mike gave me all, everything I needed. And I didn't have to deal with people opening the door here in the press box and freezing everybody out. It was nasty. Four is a strike in there, two and one. It is legitimately North Face weather on Memorial Day weekend. It is not hot dog and hamburger weather. But as, as you said, these two teams, they've played in this kind of oh yeah substance all season long. It's been like this. You know, It doesn't matter if you were home or road. It's been all over. The weather was was unkind in the spring throughout the U.S. and players just deal with it. It's you know it's better than packing it in and saying no, we're not going to play. Especially with with COVID, UConn was shut down for 14 days. Didn't play a game for two weeks. So they'll play in anything. Upton going back, looking up, and this ball is gone. My goodness, the carry from Kyler Fedko. He got it up on the jet stream and knocked it out for not only the first hit, but the first run of this game, and it's 1-0 Connecticut. Wow, John, what a surprise. The Warden does it for the Huskies. His 12th homer of the season, Kyler Fedko. This is why he's an MLB prospect. Muscle had the number one up to his dugout because that is one for the UConn Huskies. First hit in this game, it comes in big fashion. It's power pitching versus power hitting. This time, the Big East Player of the Year arrives and makes a statement for a breakthrough. Huskies draw first blood. Did you see Fedco? Before he got the first base, helmets off, the pump. He knew it was gone. Down to Mike, you had a bird's eye view of that, didn't you, Mike? Well, yeah, that was a long view. I don't know if I can even see that far anymore because that was out there. But Kyler Fedko, he gets back to the dugout and he says, follow me, follow me, follow me. A lot of energy down here after that big shot. Good stuff, Mike, thanks. Chris Winkle, the batter now. Upton went back, John, and he's circling under it and you thought he might get to the track and either A, make the catch, or B, find a way to tuck himself in to play it off the wall. But it cleared the wall. Everyone in the park, a little surprise, except Fedko. He knew it. He had the feel 
off the bat that there'd be some carry. And he got the jet stream. A little push from Mother Nature. Wind starting to blow, not in anymore, but blowing out towards right field. Big cut there, two and two to Winkle. He flew out to left his first A.B. So Jonas Smith goes nine up, nine down through the first three. And Kyler Fedko changes that narrative with one swing here in the fourth. Really something, just how much Jonas Smith was in control. But that's why Kyler Fedko was voted by the coaches as the best player in this conference, Bob. What's most impressive is he goes the other way in these conditions. The appeal on the Winkle check swing registers a ball. Count is full. Amazing piece of hitting. And now, momentum to the Huskies. You can hear from the dugout in the 3-2 pitch. Comebacker, up the middle, base hit Winkle. And here's where the contagious offense perhaps kicks in for UConn. They saw Jonas Smith first time through the order, didn't have an answer. Now the first two hitters do. Adjustments, and that's going to lead to a mound visit here. Makes sense because Smith is somebody who can be a bit up and down as a starting pitcher. You want to try to settle him down if you're Eric Ward Kemper. Pitching coach for the Blue Jays, and he comes right out of his dugout. Try to give that message. Just settle back in. Remember what got you to this point. And one run's not going to win this game in all likelihood. That's probably part one of the conversation. Hey, it's just one nothing. Still early enough in this one. Jays' offense has stranded four runners so far. And here is Eric Stock. First pitch swinging foul. Stock struck out to end the first inning against Smith. Again, Stock, line drive hitter, doesn't try to do too much. Perfect guy in this situation with Winkle over at first. But he's down 0-2. Big cut there, foul that off. And if you're Smith against Eric Stock, who might be the toughest out for UConn right now, you've got that breaking ball. But be careful with Chris Winkle, who's 14 for 15 on steals this season. I like that move. Yeah, Winkle might shorten his lead a tad, but he's still got a good chunk of real estate over there. Stock goes after the high cheese and frustrated with himself on the swing and a miss there. Big punch out for Jonas Smith, one away. Well, this is a really good move by Jonah Smith. That's an out pitch. Goes up the ladder, brings the heat to it. Out of the strike zone, there's nothing Stock can really do with that, Bob. And so, a good bounce back. That's a pitching coach, Ward Kemper, who knows his pitcher. Again, keeping an eye on Winkle. Over at first. His bro at the plate, grounded out to first in the second inning. Pat takes a strike. Brothers off. Stole that base easily. Well, he didn't get a good jump. This was a delayed steal. This is really not a good jump. We could see this again. It's a delayed steal here. 
Vilches, I don't think Vilches saw Chris Winkle taken off for the bag. It was a good secondary lead, but he kind of took off late. That pitch was in when he really started to gun for the bag. That's where speed pays off. Yeah. Winkle's got it. And even though it was late, it was delayed, he still made it in there easily. Upstairs to Pat, one and one. How about the brother connection? Think about Kyler and Christian Fedko. Right now, Pat Winkle at the dish, Chris Winkle at second. It's the first time that UConn has had a, a pair of sibling teammates since the mid-1960s. You'd have to go back to Jim Pender's dad, Jim Sr., and his uncle Tom, the coach, who were one of the pairs, the other pair being Dave and Tom Proctor, a pair of twins back in the 60s. So it's been a while. The Huskies have this family type of trait, uh, but to have two pairs of brothers, there's got to be times where Jim Penders gets a little bit hooked up on, wait, I meant you, Pat. As long as you're hitting, as long as you're fielding, <laughs> I don't care which you winkle sure. it is. In the dirt, squeezed there by Vilches. It's almost like right now, I'm watching Pat and Chris communicate and look at each other. It's almost like they're working together. They are, in the at bat. Yeah, it's that brother-brother backyard thing yep. going on right now. What's the feeling for Pat Winkle knowing his brother? He can look right at his brother, try to bring him in. Man, Jonah Smith was cruising, wasn't he? And in a blink, a lead gone, give, it, give up his first base hit on the home run by Fedco. Trying to limit the damage to the single tally, 2-2. Two -two. And now it's full. It's interesting, you talked about, John, the Winkle brothers. This wasn't an automatic pairing at UConn. Chris had to help recruit Pat because there was an offer from Vanderbilt. And Jim Penders leaned on Chris and said, hey, we'll talk to your brother, tell him, give him the sales pitch. It helped. 3-2, swing and a miss. Boy, how about Jonah Smith reaching back and getting back-to-back -back K's here after the home run, after the single, and now there's two away. Took a little bit of something off of it. Another pitch that's in the perfect spot. There's not much that Pat Winkle can do with that. So good location by Smith. Dips it down in the zone on the outer half. He's responded nicely since giving up the two hits, the Kyler Fedko bomb over the brick wall and right. And then the Chris Winkle single back up the middle. Eric Ward Kemper goes out and talks to him. And ever since, Jonah Smith's been A-OK. -okay. Six punch outs now for Jonah. Hasn't walked a batter. Here is Christian Fedko. Strikeout victim, his first at bat in the second inning. These two pitchers are just wheeling. We have a combined dozen strikeouts, to your point, on the six for Smith. Gasparius with six Ks as well. It's been fun to watch the power arms. In the dirt, Vilches smothers it. 2 0. Oh. It's exactly what you want if you're either one of these coaches because there's a reality here for one of these teams. The loser of this game has to play again against Xavier later today. You want to have as many bullpen arms for that game and for what will be tomorrow, which the loser of this game is going to have to win three in a row to win the Big East Championship. Ooh. Ooh. Who is right? What a pitch there by Smith. Yeah, that was terrific. That was as good as a medium rare steak at the Drover in Omaha. Mmm, steak. It's lunchtime, sorry folks. <laughs> Two and one to Christian Fedko. 
Chris Winkle out at second. A hitch there by Fedko. He thought about it. But lays off three and one. I'd hitch two. That's a knee buckling breaking ball. Tempting, but Fedko didn't go after it. So now advantage Christian at 3-1. Outside, he walks. That's the first free pass issued by Jonah Smith, and the inning continues. Quality at bat from Christian Fedko. He laid off that breaking ball in the outer half. Takes another. That was a heater that just missed. And so now it's set up for the RBI leader in the Big East Conference, Reggie Crawford. He just seems to be a different hitter when there's men on base. He thrives in this role. Just missing. 1-0. Should we call him Mr. Ducks on the Pond? That's too long. That's that's too much on the business card. Right. Yeah. But to your point, he is a different hitter. When the opportunity is there, he will feast. And here is the opportunity. 2-0. and oh. I would say that when there's men on base and Reggie Crawford comes up, it's Club Crawford. There you go. Welcome to Club Crawford. There you go. You are cordially invited to Club Crawford. I'll scratch out the Ducks on the Pond yep, that's reference. That's, again, <laughs> too much. Doesn't work. Smolsey might have an idea. 2-0. Make it 3-0. Right now, he's just trying to load him up here and put another duck on the pond, and that would help the cause for the Huskies. And it would bring up David Langer, who homered on Thursday. Already at 62 pitches now. This one is caught by Upton. And Upton shaken up. He snow cones it in right and side retired. Wow. This game goes from 1-0 to perhaps 3-0 if that ball gets past Upton, but it does not. What a play by the Jays right fielder. But it's UConn in front on the home run by Kyler Fedko. 1-0 Huskies after four. Playoff baseball. If your money is working toward the same goals, why keep it in different places? SoFi is a one-stop shop for your finances, designed to work better together. Spend with SoFi and get cashback rewards that automatically go towards your goals, like investing in stocks, ETFs, and crypto. That's better together. Or pay down your SoFi debt sooner. That's better together. And that's how SoFi is helping millions get their money right. Jonah Smith owes Parker Upton a gift. You've got the Big East runs batted in leader and Reggie Crawford up. He thinks he's got a two run double. Parker Upton with the gem of this Big East tournament out and right. Incredible play and effort. Gutsy was a bit shaken up, but he fights through it and makes an outstanding grab to keep this at a one nothing game. A defining moment in this game and in an inning where UConn scored, off the bat of Kyler Fedko, out right for the UConn Huskies. It still feels like Creighton has some level of control on this game, and the reason for that, Bob Brainerd, is Parker Upton. What an outstanding play by Upton. And again, you saw him, I'll tumble for you, tuck and roll after making the snow cone catch. Came up a little gimpy, maybe had the wind knocked out of him. 
something to be said about the way Creighton plays defense. 982 fielding percentage, that's top 10 in the country. Yeah, it's service. They had a case of the yips to close out the regular season. Very un-Blue Jay-like. But they hit the reset button, certainly here in Mason, Ohio. That last catch on display is proof. Keeps this a one nothing <laughs> ball game here, top of five. And Hannafin the batter. Strikeout victim his first time up. Make it strikeout victim his second time up as Kasparius registers K number seven. One up and one down here in the fifth. Ben Kasparius is working perfectly with all his pitches right now. He has confidence in every single pitch, and that's what Josh McDonald, his pitching coach, says is so special about him. Schmoltzy? Yeah, guys, I was just watching Ben Kasparius between innings, and it's almost like the prize fighter waiting to go back into the ring. He's kind of walking around. He's got some energy sort of pounding his the railing down here. They get up and warm up and come back. Um, talked with pitching coach Josh McDonald about the wind and how they want to pitch in this wind. And then Richie Crawford came over and gave him a little coach-up session and said, hey, you know, you really look like you're in control when you got runners on base because you let one get away from you, but you brought it back. Nice job. So this team building and coaching itself up. Yeah, thanks, Mike. It's easy to self-motivate when you're putting big crooked numbers up, double-digit runs, and it's easy for pitchers to pitch when they got a big cushion. Ben Kasparius only has a one-run lead here, but he's pitching lights out. Another K, eight in the books for him, two outs, top of the order in Upton. We're seeing everything. He starts with that breaking ball to get the first strike on this inning. That looked more like a, a changeup, took a little something off of it to go down the zone, and now he starts with a fastball to Parker Upton. This is brilliant pitching by Kasparius and he's working quickly right now. Yeah, he sure is. To, to Mike's point, that's that's the pacing. That's the energy in the dugout. I want to get back out there. And when he does get back out there, he's raring to go. Yes, he is. This kid is intense. Jim Penders talks about how when Kasparius has to get talked to or get taken out of the game, he'll have Josh McDonald take him out if he has to get taken out because Penders doesn't like dealing with how intense Kasparius can be on the mound. He said, I'm a little bit afraid of him. No one, oh wants, no one wants that heat, and the Jays don't want that heat either. Three up, three down, all via the K. Nine punch outs now for Ben Kasparius. Dealing here against the Jays. He's given up a hit, but that's it. This is high-level pitching from Ben Kasparius. Just locating really well. We see the full arsenal on display from the junior for the Huskies. It's hard to believe he's a number two for this UConn team. Pitches like a number one, could easily be a number one. He goes to the outer half, and he says, you know what, I'll take something off here. Ben Kasparius is locked in. If your money is working toward the same goals, why keep it in different places? SoFi is a one-stop shop for your finances, designed to work better together. Spend with SoFi and get cashback rewards that automatically go toward your goals, like investing in stocks, ETFs, and crypto. That's better together. Or pay down your SoFi debt sooner. That's better together. And that's how SoFi is helping millions get their money right. Jonah Smith back at it on the bump for the Blue Jays in a one nothing contest here against UConn. You can feel the intensity of this ball game. And we mentioned it earlier. The winner is in the driver's seat 
for the Big East Baseball Championship. They know they play on Sunday afternoon here at Prasco Park. The team that's defeated will have to turn it around, play again later today against Xavier, and then if you survive the Musketeers, you have to win twice on Sunday. So, John, one step forward, two steps back. Someone's taken a step forward and someone's taken two steps back because that path will certainly be a longer one. We do have some bit of news. Parker Upton is out of this game now for Creighton with a hip injury. We just saw him hit, but obviously he's a little bit shaken up from that catch in the previous inning. So Alan Roden moves to right field for Creighton. David Webble is now in left. Roden from left to right now for the Blue Jays. David Webble comes into this game. That's unfortunate for the Blue Jays because Upton, their leadoff hitter, nearly 300. He gives them one of their best chances to have a base runner. And now he's out of this game. You saw Upton again make that terrific catch, but paid the price hobbling when he finally got up. And, and he laid on the turf a while, shaken up. But an inning ending play and at least saving two runs from scoring by making that play. Big cut there by Langer, got a piece, two and two. It's Langer, Brown, and Bushling here in the bottom of the fifth inning. UConn nursing a one-nothing lead. Just a highly intense game, and both pitchers have been terrific. Combined 15 strikeouts for these two arms. Goes back to the brackets that we just mentioned, John. Both teams are well aware what this game means. Well, and if you're Xavier, you're sitting here thinking, oh man, these two starting pitchers are really rolling. That means that both pitching staffs are rested. Backhanded play by Megs. Nicely done, one away. Good play here by Megs, because it, it did take a bit of a skip. Hop and a jump in the Prasco dirt. In the backhand here, get over to his right, down to one knee. It's a nice job. It's always impressive, Bob. We've covered Creighton baseball here in recent years. Just how fundamentally sound they are. They really don't give you many free outs. And like you said, they, they had the yips a little bit. They had some nerves they had to get through. But I think it helps the Blue Jays that their last two Big East regular season series were against teams that are in this tournament. Indeed. And it helps the other teams as well. But you learn from your mistakes. And I think Creighton's learned from some of those mistakes. Out of play, out of play. That ball out of play. Yeah, as good as the... Jay's defense has been and was this season. You encounter some obstacles. And you say, okay, it's not automatic. We're not always going to be sound defensively simply because we have Creighton on our jersey. This one launched to the gap and it will split all the way to the wall for Brown. Stammed up double here with one away in the fifth. UConn just keeps on coming. And this is a pitch that is belt high, middle of the plate. And Brown stays back on it enough to gap it. And for Chris Brown, his ninth double of the season. Not one of the team's leaders, but when you have somebody like that as your number eight hitter and as a freshman really impressive stuff he's known for his glove he does a great job at the hot corner but he splits the gaps and now if you're Jonah Smith in a one nothing game where Kasparius is dealing there's really no room to give up much more see what Zach Bushling does off the end of the back could be trouble it is drops in for a base hit Roll comes in, runners at the corners now. First and third for the Huskies. And Bushling 
boy, he didn't mess around right, right after that first offering from Smith. And just did a little deposit job in the left center. Yeah, just a flare. It's played well by the Creighton outfield. That's a situation where you got to get to that quickly, and I thought Webble did a nice job because if there's any issue, Jim Petters might be sending Brown. But now things set up. This is dangerous now. This is dangerous when your eight and nine hitters, the two weakest hitters on this club statistically, get on base because here comes the warden. Vilches finds the baseball. Keeps the runners at bay. Kyler Fedko went yard. Back in the fourth inning. Solo shot to right center that cleared the high brick wall out there. And yes, as John Fanta pointed out, this is trouble for Creighton. Brown at third, Bushling at first. Important that he got on and set the table here for Fedko. You have to be really careful here because if it's any part of the strike zone, Kyler Fetko can do damage. You're looking for a ground ball. Try to turn two. <laughs> that one, even the foul tip, had some anger. Here's the last AB. You see the swing. The helmet was off. Before he got the first, he points back to his dugout and says, I got you. And he gave them the lead. The only run of this contest so far. Jim Pender says this kid just loves to hit. He even does it when he's playing MLB The Show on the video game. That's all he does is hit. That's all he does. And he said, follow me earlier in the dugout. Now they're trying to follow him for insurance. And a strike from Smith. He gets his nickname, the Warden, Kyler Fedko does, because last year he was calling five guys for an order. And he said, oh yeah, it's for Kyler. So the, the person that took the order said, okay, uh, Skyler. Somehow an employee thought that was Sky Warden. <laughs> I, so they went to pick up the order and they said, order for the Sky Warden. Well, his teammates caught wind of that, and so he's become the Warden. Sky Warden was a little bit long for them. So Kyler Fedko, Skyler, Sky Warden, now Warden. And what does Warden mean? He's at the top of this lineup, and everybody follows what the Warden says and does. Let's see if he can do it right here. Trouble if you don't. Uh -oh. Blasted to left center. Webble is there. Wynn knocked it down. Tagging and scoring from third to make it 2 nothing. Well, the Warden, boy, that ball jumped off the bat, but again, going to left center with the wind, just gutting it, knocked it down. Nevertheless, gets the job done, doubles the lead, it's 2 nothing Huskies. This is exactly what you want to do, just manufacture the run. You would have liked for it to drop, but Kyler Fedko does his job. He's produced both runs in this game, with clean swings, he went the other way. Now he gets one in the air to moderately deep left field. And Kyler Fedko, two, great nothing. Dare I say, John, that ball was hit as hard as the home run. The difference was the win. He got the carry to right center. This time, that gale force breeze coming in right in the teeth of that baseball knocked it down and, and, and Webble made an easy catch. Maybe even harder, but nevertheless, productive in both ABs for the Big East Player of the Year. Two nothing, two away, Chris Winkle the batter. Winkle singled and stole a base, his last at bat in the fourth. Bouncing ball foul. Well, the blast to right field was a little summer breeze, seals and crofts. 
I'm playing name that too, Bob. Summer Breeze. And the liner yes. to left, that was <laughs> that was Winter Breeze by Mother Nature. That ball was hit harder, I would say. I think that ball was hit even harder to left. It's just it was on a frozen rope. Webble, Webble's getting tested since coming into this game on left field. Told you at the outset, Mother Nature would be the opponent for both of these clubs. How can they handle the conditions? How do they make the adjustments? Count is two and one here to Winkle. Keeping an eye on Bushling, close side. Well, this is now a position where if you are Creighton, you can't afford to go down by more than two, in my opinion. The UConn bullpen is loaded. And so even if Kasparius doesn't keep going, and he's been rolling, he's got nine strikeouts, he, he's going to go as long as he wants to, as long as he's capable of. But if this game gets to the seventh inning and UConn still up 2 nothing. Man, does it become tough for Creighton because the Huskies have the arms to close. Power arms, it's just a matter of command. Strike, check, but Jonah Smith hit the target. Count is full. Bushling will be off with the pitch here. Well, you're talking about one of the all-time hits leaders in UConn history with Chris Winkle up there. So it's a full count, but he just scraps. Be careful here if you're Jonah Smith. Don't leave it up. Oh, okay. He went, he went up. And Jonah Smith says, needed that. He surrenders a run, but leaves a runner stranded. And we've got five in the books here in Mason, Ohio. It's Connecticut, two nothing. If your money is working toward the same goals, why keep it in different places? SoFi is a one-stop shop for your finances, designed to work better together. Spend with SoFi and get cashback rewards that automatically go toward your goals, like investing in stocks, ETFs, and crypto. That's better together. Or pay down your SoFi debt sooner. That's better together. And that's how SoFi is helping millions get their money right. Welcome back to beautiful Prasco Park here in Mason, Ohio. This is Phil Arrington. He is the uh, vice chairman and the owner of this beautiful facility. And, and Phil, first of all, thank you so much for having us, for hosting us, and for hosting this Big East tournament. I know it's a labor of love for you and all your employees, isn't it? It, it absolutely is. And uh, uh, we're so fortunate and blessed to be able to have uh, the Big East Conference here and uh, just be able to, to serve and support everybody. And uh, we, I think internally, we apologize for the cold weather, um, but we uh, um, are, are glad um, to, to be here and, uh, and, and serve you guys. Well, I hail from Wisconsin, so I brought the weather with me. So Pat, uh, Phil, you don't, you don't worry about Mother Nature and what she's doing here. I heard, I overheard some of the folks here that work for you that they have quote unquote real jobs that that they don't just manicure the baseball diamond and they don't run the facilities here they have real jobs back over here on on campus but to them too i heard them all say we look forward to this every year absolutely um 
we're fortunate that our, our employee base um, has total buy-in on what we are all about. Not only on the business side, obviously the economic engine has to be strong in order to be to be able to do the things um, that we want to do in the community and, and globally. Um, but universally, our employees are tremendous. They're out here in all um, elements. And you're right. You know, we have people who are VPs of sales or, um, you know, guys in our business uh, dr um, business development group, um, all the way down to, um, you know, our facilities people that are here long hours to make sure that when people come on this community, that they sense um, this is something different and that um, the, the Prasco Park experience and the Prasco experience is one that um, we've been fortunate. Our business um, in the pharmaceutical um, area has been um, tremendous. And even last year during the pandemic, we had, a, we had a phenomenal year. And we want to share those blessings with the community. And I think what you see here, even on a day like today, people, they come out here because there are two things that we always uh, talk about, goodness and joy. We want to provide goodness and joy to everybody who comes on this campus. It may be a student athlete. It may be somebody associated with the Big East Conference, um, their officials, the SIDs, all those individuals, but just the run-of-the-mill um, Mason um, you know, northeastern part of Cincinnati a community come out here and enjoy great level of baseball and what we can provide here at Prasco Park. I know you want to give a shout out to the grounds crew because you Absolutely. look at this field and what it's been through. Yes. You know, the, the harsh elements, all the rain that fell yesterday as that ball falls for a base hit for Roden. But, I mean, you look out here, you would never know, Phil, that we had the bad weather that we had all day yesterday. Your guys have worked hard on this 24 7. Yeah, a tremendous staff. I, you know, a lot of things that people don't realize about those those guys, they are all um, former baseball players, former college baseball players. Um, uh, most all of them played for me at some point um, on the you know as a as a uh, amateur baseball coach, and so they appreciate the surface, they appreciate the environment of providing um, a major league quality field every single time, and. Um, Another base hit. Yeah, you can do play by play. No, that, hey. Uh, <laughs> so we we uh, you know since we played our first game here in June of 2008, my my prayer, my goal for this park would be that it would be an exceptional experience for the for the player. Um, my son grew up an infielder, and so I was always very curious of how the ball rolled out to the infielders. And so uh, Trent Hanna, who is our director of stadium operations, um, and his staff, David and Austin Lenhart. Those guys have been around um, pretty pretty much, uh, you know, the life of the uh, the ballpark. But they understand that from a coaching standpoint, but more importantly, as a playability standpoint, we want this facility to be the very best facility, regardless of level, Major League Baseball, Division One College Baseball, whatever. That it it plays at a very high level. Chatting with Phil Arrington, he's the owner and the vice chairman of Brasco Park here in Mason, Ohio. When you dreamed this when you started to put it together on paper and just in your mind did the end result surpass even that Phil? you know I think when you you first uh, you know start to do something like this years ago I was looking for the dream was I wanted to build a almost a throwback ballpark, uh, like a, uh, the old municipal stadiums that used to dot the American landscape, you know, in the 1930s and 40s when barnstorming teams would come through and the sure. community, community would gather at those spots to watch this great game. And so um, it's evolved. And, you know, to, to get a, a high school uh, state tournament game was a big deal. To get a Division II college conference tournament was a big deal. To get a, a prominent preeminent conference like the Big East uh, Conference to, to be a part of this, that was an enormous deal. That took us to the next level. Um, and then we were fortunate this past year to be to be a, uh, a one of 30 alternate sites um, in Major League Baseball. That was another step. And so um, for guys who are not familiar here, just the, the improvements we've made to the ballpark, it truly is um, pretty exceptional. And that's, that's, that's a testament to our staff and our employees. You see the Huskies, a little adversity here in the top half of the sixth inning. Two aboard for Creighton with one down. And for the first time, 
Ben Kasparius, a uh, little bit of a struggle here leading it two to nothing. Uh, Phil, uh, not just the ballpark, but the surrounding parts. I mean, you walk in and the greenery, uh, the gardens, the fountains, you see in, in, in the background, there's folks that can sit around. I mean, when we had nice weather here on Thursday evening, yeah. I was amazed at all, all the families that, that were out here. They were just enjoying themselves. So if you're a baseball fan or not, you can just come to the park, this whole campus, and just really enjoy yourself. Someone's going to always find something to do, aren't they? Uh, absolutely. And, you know, when we were building the campus, uh, obviously we have a lot of visitors on the, on the pharmaceutical side um, that are coming here. And uh, on a business, from a business standpoint, we say if we get them on this campus, we're going to win. If there are any, any potential ties for uh, doing a business deal, uh, interacting with our people, but giving companies the sense of, okay, these guys are legit. They're going to be here for a while. And from a baseball standpoint and from the community standpoint, I wanted people to come on and sort of think about um, if you went to Augusta you know, the masters, you go in and you're like, man, look how this place is landscaped, how immaculate it is. And uh, we get, we get a ton of comments. People are like, man, your flowers and just your, you know, the greenery, everything. And that's what we want. You know, I, it, it it probably would have been a lot easier just to concrete everything and, and uh, you know, whatever. Um, But there, we, we're been blessed, you know, as a, as a Christian faith-based company, we want to be able to share what God has built here, not what the Arrington family or myself has done, but what God has built here. He's blessed us. He's given us the resources to do these things. And so um, we want people to, to share in that. And you share ice cream, free we ice do. cream. I mean, that was something. And I, and I understand that last night Mother Nature was, well, she was she was pretty evil to everybody. We waited until 10 o'clock <laughs> to get one game in the books, and you and your staff gave out blankets to the hardy souls that decided to stick around and stick it out to watch baseball. Yeah, that's um, those are the uh, the finer touches. You know, my background on the business side has been in sales and marketing, and so you know we we want to be uh, have a level of excellence that goes through and through and, and be have a servant mindset we're here to we continually say hey we're here to serve the people that come here and so we looked out last night we knew it was going to be brisk um, our staff Jessica Miner who who's in charge of our hospitality and events group she's a just an awesome awesome uh, employee and individual and I consider you know uh, an additional daughter uh, she's like a family member she came to me and she said uh, um, she calls me coach or, <laughs> or Mr. <laughs> Arrington she says uh, you know we have some extra blankets left over from the uh, from the spring would you are you okay with us passing these out I said absolutely get them out and and let's take care of these uh, the individuals that are here and if it provides a little warmth hey that's awesome and so um, you know we've been fortunate I, again I'll say it again to to be able to do some different things Having things that are complimentary, I think, sort of catches people off guard. It's like, wait, you know, the ice cream's free or the concession's free, and and you know, we're not doing it to to for any any uh, unneeded publicity. It's just who are who we are, or the DNA, and so that servant mindset. Whether I'm here, you know, one year, five years, ten years, you know, forty years from now, uh, I learned that from my dad, who's still active in our business at 84, still works 55 hours uh, a week, and and my younger brother Chris, uh, who's intimately uh, involved in the business side, is hey, um, you can't give yourself away. You just can't give your you can't give yourself away. So, well, Phil, you put a lot of smiles on a lot of people's faces, and you continue to do that. Uh, again, thank you for hosting this tournament. Um, the weather's not your fault. Yeah. Everything else <laughs> outstanding. Thanks for stopping by. We appreciate it. It, it. it is our pleasure. Thank you for having me. That's Phil Arrington. Uh, you saw UConn wiggle out of the trouble. They still lead Creighton two to nothing. We are many. We are part of something. A force. Bigger than all of us. 
are distinct fingerprints collectively shaping and forever changing. What makes Yukon? Yukon. Forever making our mark. Forever making Yukon a part of us. Well, the Blue Jays threatened to get that goose egg off of their side of the scoreboard, but left two stranded as Ben Kasparius reared back to leave him stranded and preserve the 2-0 lead as we head to the bottom of the sixth inning. Huskies will send up Stock, Pat Winkle, and Christian Fedko. It got a little dicey, John Fanta, but again, you talked about Kasparius. As long as he wants to go, as long as he's assured that his stuff is still good and still genuine, then he'll stay out there. Jim Penders will leave him out there. And 101 pitches, 10 strikeouts. We'll see if that is it or not. But Ben Kasparius has done his part. And frankly, Jonah Smith has done his for Creighton. You can't expect perfection. Jonah Smith has given Creighton a good start. Let's see if he can keep it going here. But the Blue Jays are still very much in this game. They didn't cash in on the opportunity they just had. I wonder what happens when UConn gives it off to guys like Andrew Marrero and Caleb Worcester, a bullpen Bob that throws really hard. Stock leading off the sixth inning for the Huskies. Two runs on four hits for UConn. Creighton nothing on three. John, I was chatting with Phil Arrington there during that inning. Owner here at Prasco Park said they ran out of sandwiches. And I, I told him, blame us. <laughs> because we overdid it at lunch. No, just always, always a treat for us to call games here. And just, you walk in the place and, and you, you look at the looks. You can tell when somebody walks into Prasco for the first time because the look on their face says it all. It is a gorgeous park. The folks here are phenomenal. They welcome you with open arms. There's a base hit. Stock attacks it, thinks about it, and he'll settle for the single. Great piece of hitting by Eric Stock. He came into this game scalding hot, has been relatively held at bay this time. He goes the other way. And that's good defense in the outfield by Creighton because that could have been dangerous. Stock made a big, big turn. And he is someone who I think with a 2 nothing lead, wouldn't be surprised if Jim Penders decides to get a little bit more risky, if you will, on the base paths, try to extend it. Stock is 8 for 8 on the year. Yeah, Penders calls him instinctive on the base paths. This time lifted the left and Webble. New to the scene out there, playing it very comfortably. Makes the catch on the track, one away. Good job by Webel. Again, he came in when Upton got dinged up, making that catch in right. Roden shifted from left over to right. Yeah, this is why Creighton won a Big East title two years ago. They are just terrific defensively. They were top five in the country two years ago in defense. This year, they're top 10. Swing and a miss, protecting the runner who's going to be out. Easy pickings for Vilchis. And you saw Fedko just try to make contact because he knew the hit and run was on. And when he missed, well, Stock was a dead duck. Well, they took the risk that we were talking about, but this one backfired what they've been used to, the reason why he put that on is because you're reading that Jonah Smith is throwing first pitch strikes. Well, guess what? He, he didn't there, and it's to his fortune because now there's two down and he can work a quick inning. Just missing there, one and one. To your point, John, it, it wasn't a true pitch out, but in a sense it acted like one. It, it gave Vilchis a chance to make the throw. But it's all the little things in the outfield defensively in this half inning. And how about just there? To throw out stock, make that play. This is a Creighton team that just simply does not give you extra outs. They are fundamentally sound. They're crisp in their approach. And they've got an uphill climb. 
but it's got to start in frames like these. These are the types of situations in games that get taken for granted. When you try to keep a game at one nothing or 2 nothing. Ooh, Jonah Smith taking steps towards the dugout. Two and two with two away, trying to wiggle out of the sixth inning here and preserve <laughs> the deficit, if you will, at just two nothing. Three and two now. Crawford awaits if Christian Fedko can reach. Later today, Xavier back in action. They will draw the team defeated here in this one. 3-2 from Smith. This one muscled in the right for a base hit. I'll tell you what, shows you how strong Fedco is. That ball hit below the trademark, but he was able to just punch it in the right. It's a good pitch. It's better hitting by Christian Fedko. This is on the inner half of the play. It's up in the kitchen, and Christian Fedko still does something with it. It's a really good piece of hitting by the junior for the Huskies, and this gives way to the RBI master, who nearly brought in two his last time up, Reggie Crawford. Boy, Reggie thought so. He tagged on the right, but the catch was better by Upton. Down low, 1-0. Oh. Let's send it down to, to Mike Schmaltz. More on the injury to Upton. Yeah, guys, Parker Upton aggravated a hip injury that he's had for about three or four weeks on that great catch that he made, and they do not expect him back. All right, Mike, thanks. So we're going to miss. Well, that's especially big if Creighton loses this game because then you're going into a, a win or go home game with your season on the line against Xavier and you don't have your leadoff hitter. And for Upton, if you're, if that hip is already tweaked, that was a bad way. I mean, he made the catch, but there's nowhere to run and tuck and roll and try to get out of the way to preserve the hip. And that's why he was shaken up. He knew it instantly. This has been one good first meeting between these two teams. Long awaited, first ever meeting between Creighton and UConn, and worth the wait. We've just had a quality baseball game. Fundamentals executed, pitching nearly flawless, and some timely hits sprinkled in. And really the difference offensively is Kyler Fetko. Yeah, yeah the Big East <laughs> Player of the Year showing why, right? You write a script that that would be it now for a pitcher's duel where, okay, where's the offense coming from? Well, how about the best player in the Big East this season? Upstairs, Crawford didn't go after it, so it's two and two. I found this fascinating about Reggie. He's more of a swimmer in high school. So he has been late to the baseball party. But I'll tell you what, he is catching up in a hurry. Way outside, three and two. He's got a chance to make a living for a long time playing this game. And he is a superb athlete. He often beats Jim Penders to the hotel gym early in the morning. He'll be in there working out at 6.30. The commitment to the game is evident when you look at the results. 56 runs batted in in 45 games. Swing and a miss. Down that time. Smith challenges Crawford and wins the battle. To the seventh inning we go here in Mason, Ohio. It's UConn two, Creighton nothing. This Big East battle continues at Prasco. If your money is working toward the same goals, why keep it in different places? SoFi is a one-stop shop for your finances, designed to work better together. Spend with SoFi and get cashback rewards that automatically go toward your goals, like investing in stocks, ETFs, and crypto. That's better together. Or pay down your SoFi debt sooner. That's better together. 
And that's how SoFi is helping millions get their money right. Ben Kasparius up and over the century mark. Pitch count at 101 through the first six. He's out for the seventh inning, John Fanta. 10 strikeouts in the books, 10 and counting. See how much he has left in the tank here as we go to inning number seven. Ben Kasparius has had it all working, Bob. You just saw the heat to start. He's taken the off-speed route. He's painted the out side corner of the plate. That has been the common theme. You look at all these strikeouts, that one down low in the zone. That one was over the middle of the plate and he has great emotion. Jim Penders told us he's scared at times to take him out of a game. Well, guess what? At 101 pitches, he's keeping him in as we start the seventh. Now, how long is the leash? That is the question. Could be a batter that reaches that might be it. Bullpen is stirring for UConn. But right now, just stirring. Nobody's throwing. One and one to Vilches. Cuts it through there. Meantime, waiting in the wings are the Xavier Musketeers. Billy O'Connor joining us, who's waiting Ah, down by the dugout, all dressed and, and layered up. Billy, um, you, you survived, I want to say, last night, but it was actually early this morning, and sure. that's the important thing, isn't it? Absolutely. You know, it was, it was great to get that game in, uh, you know, and be able to focus on today. But crazy, crazy day yesterday, late night, but we're excited to be here today. What was uh, – take us through what you and your guys were going through with – you wake up, it's raining, and then the game time is changing literally by the hour. How do you keep everybody and yourself motivated and mentally focused on, okay, are we playing or not? For sure, that's that's the biggest concern is that, you know, doubt starts to creep into to everyone's mind that this game might not get played. You know, you're looking at the radar and there's, there's rain for – a long time throughout the course of the day, but you know the the biggest thing was convincing and, and honestly telling the guys the truth. We were going to play, you know, and talking with James Green with the, the Big East. The game needed to be played last night, and, and we were certainly open to playing whenever the game was, uh, whenever the window was there for us to play. So, um, you know, it's a long day. You never like sitting around the hotel, told them to get up and move around when there's some breaks in the rain to make sure that they weren't just laying in bed all day. But you know, we came over here, played some mafia out in the uh, the tent out in the right center, and, and had a good time with it. Wow. I haven't heard in the game Mafia in a while. That's, yeah, no kidding. That's back to the old camp days <laughs> growing up. That's some good stuff, Billy. John Fancy here. And you had Lane Flam go seven innings of two-run ball. Then you give it to Michael Dillon. And then off to Mr. Musketeer, Trey Schramm, who's been the closer before. He's gotten wins for you in this tournament. To get that type of pitching, and they only allow two runs, your bullpen doesn't get taxed at all, just how pleased with you with the way that your pitching can set up the rest of the way. Yeah, for sure. You know, that's something that we really feel good about with our roster right now is our pitching depth, you know. And it's never good to lose the first game in a tournament. But the, the beauty about this tournament is it's four teams. You don't have to win six or seven games to come back and win it. And with where we're at with our pitching depth, especially having, you know, played four games all year and had four starters and know what that feels like to have to win or have to play four games with a bullpen, um, each weekend this year, it's something we're accustomed to, you know. And again, we're up against it a little bit. We're going to have to win one today and two tomorrow to get it done. But I really feel like we have the pitching depth to do it. If guys go out and do what they're capable of doing, and we're swinging the bats pretty well right now, um, I think we're in a good position to, to win these next three. Billy, in 2009, when you were a player, you led this program to history. That first NCAA tournament berth and 8-10 titles, that's a 12th strikeout for Ben Kasparias. Before we let you go, as somebody who has really eat, you sleep, you breathe, save your baseball. Now as the coach of this program, what's your message to your guys here heading into today and the rest of the way? Belief, absolutely. You know, I referenced 2009 on the bus after we lost the other night that we were in a deep hole there because that was a six-team tournament. We lost game one. 
And, uh, you know, you're looking at it in a, a situation where we didn't have the pitching depth on that team, and you needed every break to go your way. But I can remember sitting on the bus and talking with my teammates and saying, you know what, guys, we are going to do this. And that belief carried us through, and I believe that fully. And I told our guys, you don't believe right now, man, don't get on the bus tomorrow. Don't have a doubt in your mind that this thing is going to happen for us. So we got to approach that every day. You know, UConn's a great team. Creighton's a, get a great team. Whoever we play next and then whoever we're going to have to play tomorrow too, it's going to be a challenge for us, but you got to believe that we can do it. Billy O'Connor, thanks so much. I'm I'm fired up to go home and cut my lawn or something, so you've done your job. Thank you. <laughs> awesome, guys. I appreciate it. <laughs> That's Billy O'Connor. He's waiting in the wings here. He and Xavier Musketeers, they'll get the winner. They'll get the loser, actually, of this game, the defeated team, John Fanta. Ben Kasparis has already struck out the side once. He's got a dozen. He's one strike away from striking out the side in one, two, three fashion twice in this game. And on the cusp of a Baker's dozen. See if he can get it here. Big East tournament record is 16. He has been outstanding, Bob Rayner. 2-2 two, two to Clifford. Swing and a miss. There's your Baker's dozen. There's 13. And Casparius looking at the Creighton dugout saying, shh, Blue Jays, I got your number. And the number is a 2-0 lead, middle of seven. If your money is working toward the same goals, why keep it in different places? SoFi is a one-stop shop for your finances, designed to work better together. Spend with SoFi and get cashback rewards that automatically go toward your goals, like investing in stocks, ETFs, and crypto. That's better together. Or pay down your SoFi debt sooner. That's better together. And that's how SoFi is helping millions get their money right. Yeah, guys, back here at Prasco Park. What a big finish to that inning for Ben Kasparis. You saw that little gesture there to the Creighton dugout, and that lit this dugout up. And the Ben Mafia here said, yeah, maybe we took a little risk on that one. But <laughs> they're happy that that paid off. Ben Kasparis getting a lot of hugs here in the dugout. We don't know if he's going to be done yet, but pretty good chance he might be out of this ballgame. But, it, man, is he throwing a beauty. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Yeah, the hugs all around, you think – Remember, he started the inning at 101 pitches. And if he's going to exit the proceedings, he's going to exit on his terms and exit in style. Boy, did he ever. Struck out the side. 13 punch outs now for Ben. And if he does call it a day, it was a great day at the office for the right-hander. And now Jonah Smith. He continues on his job to try to keep this a two-run deficit. Langer the DH, kickstarts things for the Huskies here in the seventh. One-one. And you saw the shush by Kasparius going back to the dugout. We've mentioned it, John Fanta. They didn't get to meet during the season. They finally meet here in late May. And the rivalry, it's on. It's real. Fished at it. Langer down to a knee trying to make something out of nothing, and he can't. One up and one down here in the seventh inning. That's well, nine Ks now for Jonah Smith, yeah, John. If not for Kasparius, we'd be talking about Jonah Smith even more. This is an outstanding pitcher's duel. 
We've been treated to it. And again, we're watching two guys who are not the aces of their staffs. They've delivered better performances. These are the best two performances we've seen in this tournament thus far. Yeah, clearly. Brown cuts through the first pitch. Brown doubled and scored in the fifth inning. May prove to be a huge run as Creighton, can they get to what we think will be the UConn bullpen? Now, tall task and tall order there for sure, but at this point, they may prefer to see somebody besides Gasparius. One one to Brown. That's a base hit to left. Brown having a day, he's two for three. He's aboard with one away for Bushling, and, and again, you know what that means. Bushling at the plate, Kyler Fedko on deck. Well, that's exactly, again, what you want from the bottom of your order. This UConn bottom of the order has done a really nice job of just staying within themselves. Brown and Bushling have three of the team's seven hits. They've done their part. Followed that one back to the screen. Yeah, go back to Bushling when he singled in the fifth inning. If he doesn't, two away, Kyler Fedko, that's a fly ball that just ends the frame. No damage done. Instead, sack fly RBI to make it 2 nothing. So Brown and Bushley in the table setters for the big boppers up top. Smith nods. The 1-1. One, one. Bouncing ball off the glove of Hayes. Recovers, throws, and nice recovery there by Jonas Smith to get there in a hurry. Hayes couldn't glove it cleanly. It took some funny English off the leather, but Jonas Smith heady off the mound to cover. Oh, well, here's the man, Kyler Fedko, the warden, the Big East player of the year. He's the difference in this game with a home run in the fourth inning and an RBI sack fly in the fifth. He makes the most of his at-bats, and here's a chance to get a third. So Fedko with two, two away, and Brown the runner at second. And a strike from Smith. Goes without saying, but I'll say it anyway. That run at second would be huge for UConn. Pad their lead to three to nothing. As we get to the late stages, just six outs remaining for Creighton. So Fedko trying to find a way. He's found it before. Takes a rip and it goes foul. He has a really unique personality. He's just a baseball guy and around his teammates he's making those corny jokes at times in the dugout that just keep a team going. And I just think back to the phrase that Mike Schmoltz told us from the UConn dugout that he said earlier, follow me. That's the type of player you need in the postseason mentally. Boy, Smith, he got him. And he barks, not at the UConn dugout, but his own. Saying, I'll take care of business here. You guys take care of business at the plate. This is rivalry baseball. This is Big East baseball. It's intense. It's got some trash talk. Hey, I don't mind it. It's awesome. If your money is working toward the same goals, why keep it in different places? SoFi is a one-stop shop for your finances, designed to work better together. 
spend with SoFi and get cash back rewards that automatically go towards your goals. Like investing in stocks, ETFs, and crypto. That's better together. Or pay down your SoFi debt sooner. That's better together. And that's how SoFi is helping millions get their money right. Uh, been there, done that. We were accurate. The day is done for Ben Kasparius, John. And 13 strikeouts. Count them all. And the last three as impressive as any on the day. Struck out the side in the seventh to keep the lead intact for the Huskies at two to nothing. Kasparius was dealing up and over 100 pitches. And now he gives way for the final six outs, at least first three here in the eighth inning. It's the right-hander, Justin Willis. Jim Pender says he's an undersized righty. However, he's got guts and courage when he pitches. Good numbers there, good ERA. He keeps the walks in check, strikeouts at 15. Transfer from Vanderbilt. So that tells you what you need to know about the upside for Justin Willis. New Jersey kid, now in his junior season. He missed all of last year, even in the shortened season, he had an injury. In 2019, he didn't appear in a game at Vandy. So he has not pitched entering this season, had not pitched in a game since 2018. And now in 2021, he's pitching in the biggest game of his college career. So it takes a whole different gear here with a 2-0 lead to pitch in this type of spot. Let's see what Justin Willis is made of. He's facing David Webel. Remember, Webel came in to play in the outfield when Parker Upton got injured. Big stat. UConn is 23-1 when leading in the eighth or later. 23-1. But... The Creighton Blue Jays are the magical team in the Big East. They're the team that makes things happen late in games. Strike there to Webble. First AB for Webble since coming on. Off the end of the bat, right center, Kyler Fedko gets there. And there is out number one here in the eighth inning. It'll bring up Megs, the second baseman. This is an old school game. Old school baseball on a Saturday afternoon. It's pitching, if you want the 9-8 game, look, sign me up for power pitching. Every at bat right now feels massive in a two nothing game. First pitch strike to Megs, 0 for 3 today. Willis has a tough arm slot to read out of the hand. Hides the ball really well. That is absolutely nasty. Started Megs outside, then comes inside. And now Megs really guessing here down 0-2. Well, Megs asked the umpire, Brian Drury, if it was a strike. He said, no doubt. Swings away. Down the line at third, Brown crossed the diamond and in time with Crawford picking it at first, two away. Yeah, th this is a bullpen. I, I brought it up earlier, but I, I really think it needs to be said. Here comes Jim Penders, and it looks like he's gonna make a move. And you know why he might make a move? Yeah, he's gonna make a move to Caleb Worcester for a four out save. So Justin Willis did his part. He's gonna play the matchups here. And they want lefty on lefty. They want Caleb Worcester for a four-out save to face Allen Road in the lefty. They want Worcester to get the third out in this inning and then get the three in the ninth. 
Bob, this really is something that's important here. We brought it up. If UConn had a late lead, it becomes really difficult for the opponent. This is a Huskies bullpen that has Justin Willis, Caleb Worcester, who's coming into this game and has been dominant. Andrew Marrero, a true freshman, who I think has as a tough of an arm from a freshman perspective as anybody in the league. Kenny House, who's a senior as well. Garrett Coe, who we saw earlier this week. I, I think that that's where UConn's st strength is. There's not as much separation as one might think from one Big East team to another. But where UConn separates themselves is here, is that Jim Penders can say, okay, Justin Willis, you're going to get me two outs. Uh, then I'll give the ball to Caleb Worcester, and then I'll go to somebody else. He's got tons of options. It's a bullpen that's capable of winning a tournament and winning a regional in the NCAAs. That's what makes a difference in an NCAA regional, is do you have bullpen arms when you get to the fifth inning to get you out? UConn has the arms to do that. And this guy, they call him the rubber arm because he can go, he can get you the last three outs, he can get you a single out, he can go multiple innings. Seven saves on the year for Worcester. The story is great. I was told as a sophomore he might not make the team going forward. He might not have good enough stuff to be on the UConn roster. He goes to Penders and says, I'll show you that I'm good enough. And during the fall break, he reinvents himself over the holiday break, came back throwing from a lower slot, and that was the big difference for him. He really had to start from scratch, go back into the baseball laboratory, if you will. Picked up five miles per hour with his movement, pitches with a tougher angle, tough for the hitters to catch up and square up. He induces a lot of ground balls, so it wasn't a matter of, look, I'm going to just throw harder and blow guys away. I'm going to figure out how to pitch with movement and from that lower slot, and he's done that to become one of the key ingredients of this fantastic UConn bullpen. So Worcester on to face Roden. Roden's been on all three times today. Couple of singles and a walk. With no runs on the scoreboard, obviously, Roden stranded all three times. He'll try to find another way here with nobody on and two down. Roller to second. Fedco is there. Side retired. Willis and Worcester combining, tag teaming, if you will, to close out the eighth inning. The Huskies closer to a championship game bid. If your money is working toward the same goals, why keep it in different places? SoFi is a one-stop shop for your finances, designed to work better together. Spend with SoFi and get cashback rewards that automatically go toward your goals, like investing in stocks, ETFs, and crypto. That's better together. Or pay down your SoFi debt sooner. That's better together. And that's how SoFi is helping millions get their money right. Welcome back to Prasco Park. Jonas Smith, you talk about rubber arms, still out there for Creighton. He's given up, but seven hits, just the two runs. And he has been terrific on the hill as well. 10 strikeouts for Jonas Smith and trying to carry the load here all the way through this eighth inning. And again, this is a recording, but trying to keep this just a two run deficit, give his team a chance when they go to the ninth. Well, in big picture, in a 2-0 game, you have Smith, who's taken this thing to the bottom of the eighth inning. He's had a brilliant start, 
and this means a lot for the Creighton bullpen. In the event Creighton falls short in this game, let's look at the big picture. Their staff is fully rested beyond Jonah Smith, ready to go for what's to come. So I, I think that the, the biggest thing is right now you put up a zero and you hope that you get that leadoff man aboard in the top of the ninth inning. It's been tough for Creighton's bats, but Jonah Smith has been exceptional this afternoon. And for more on Jonah, let's head down to Mike in the dugout. Yeah, I talked with Ed Service there and asked him if he was going to bring Jonah back, and he said absolutely. He goes, he's a senior. He's earned this opportunity. This is one of his last chances. So he's going to let him finish this game if he can. All right, Mike, thanks. Important note there, Ed Service, tip of the cap to his senior, but also to John Fanta's point, maybe thinking big picture, not waving the white flag here, but you're thinking big picture, all right, if we have to play later today, bullpen, all arms on the ready and available. Two and one here to Chris Winkle. It'll be Winkle stock and then Pat Winkle here as the Huskies look for some insurance. Pounds a strike in there to Jonas Smith. Still has the good stuff here, late stages. Remember, Jonas Smith retired the first nine Huskies that he faced. Then the hits started to come. A run on two in the fourth, a run on two in the fifth. Two more hits, but they were stranded in the sixth. Wow. Wow. And K number 11 for Jonah. One away here in the eighth. He has had a live fastball that seems to have only gotten stronger as the outing's gone on. This time elevates, and UConn has not laid off that high fastball. Hats off to Jonah Smith because he's just been relentless in this performance, Bob. And this is coming off a start last weekend against Xavier where Jonah Smith only went five innings. He gave up five earned runs a week ago. What a response in a postseason game by Smith. And I think sometimes we forget about who's on the wrong end of the pitcher's duel. But, man, Jonah Smith has been just as impressive as, as Ben Kasparius. And he's pitched like he has the lead or he's in a scoreless ball game. He, he really didn't let the run in the fourth or the fifth bother him. Fly ball to right, Roden makes the catch two away. And that's been important too. He's avoided the big inning, gives up the run, but you don't see, okay, now I'm out of my rhythm. Now I'm frustrated. He just bears back down and has gone back to work. And he's one out away from going at least eight innings here. Well, do up for Creighton in the bottom half of, rather the top half of the nine. You've got Ryan Mantle, Dax Roper, Sterling Hanks. A combined one for five on the day. Mantle's reached base a couple of times via the walk. But Creighton's key to this tournament was could they get enough hitting from their five through eight hitters? They delivered the win over Seton Hall Thursday. They're going to get tested here in the top half of the ninth. This one lifted high in the air, right center. Outfielders converging, and off the wall goes Hannafin, who almost made the catch. That would have been highlight reel stuff. Hannafin was there. It got a piece of the leather, and that almost ended the eighth inning in style. This close, John Fanta. Yeah, Hannafin makes the run for it. Let's see if this gets gloved. Yes, it did. Hit the heel. Oh, my. That nearly was second outstanding catch. And here's Ed Service. And he is going to leave his man in. Man, I appreciate a skipper continuing to have the faith in his pitcher, Jonah Smith, and letting him define how this inning wraps up. And we just talked about how Jonah has been able to keep himself even keeled 
despite the run in the fourth, despite an added run in the fifth. Now he just needed that little pep talk from his head coach. Stay the course, get this last out, Christian Fedko at the dish. Belts at the center, Hannafin another chance, and he makes it count! Tests the young man in center field. Can't make the play the first time, but the second time, just as spectacular. What a gem. Will Hannafan, the Hannafan can. Absolutely spectacular defense. And maybe that could spark Creighton's offense in the top of the ninth. Though we are many, we are part of something. A force bigger than all of us. Our distinct fingerprints collectively shaping and forever changing. What makes UConn, UConn. Forever making our mark. Forever making UConn a part of us. To the ninth inning we go. Bob Brainerd along with John Fanta. You like pitching? We got it. You like defense? We got it. Including the last play by Hannafin in center field. Uh, even Mother Nature, the elements today, not ideal, John. But these two teams saying, we don't care. We're playing ball. It's an October chill. It's been in the air. Fitting for the best two teams in the Big East. This has been a playoff-like game on a Big East championship stage. Little room for air, and you have to give a ton of credit to Jonah Smith for eight innings of two-run ball. The difference for UConn offensively, Kyler Fedko with both runs batted in, but now can Creighton find some magic like they did Thursday. Ryan Mantle will lead it off at the top of the ninth inning here for the Jays. Mantle scheduled, then Roper and Hayes. Worcester looking for save number eight on the season. He showed incredible will and willpower to have that convo with Jim Penders and say, look, I'll put in the work and I'll show you not only will I be on this roster, but I will be a key contributor. To second base, tough hop for Fedco. He stays with it, and Crawford stays on the bag. One away. It was an adventure from Fedco to Crawford, but they got the out. Well, this is hit on the nose to Christian Fedco. And Reggie Crawford, with the point of <laughs> approval, he has done the splits before for this Huskies team. Just the capabilities he has at first. And he's also a pitcher. We can't forget to mention what he does off the mound as well, but a great stretch for the first out. And now you have a hitter in Dax Roper, who is one for his last 21. Trying to find away here. 0 for 3 today is Roper. 1-1 one one the count to the Jays DH. Two and one. Hayes will be next. If the Jays can't tally a pair here in the ninth inning, they play ball later today here in Mason. Skied high to left field, but it'll get knocked down. Into the glove of Stock, two away. 
That game, by the way, Xavier game scheduled for 4 p.m. Eastern time. You can catch it on the Big East Digital Network as well. The winner calls it a day and knows they have a date for the Big East Championship on Sunday afternoon. Last gasp time, perhaps, for the Blue Jays. Sterling Hayes hit by a pitch. Two strikeouts sandwiched around it. And a strike there, one and one. Just terrific pitching, and when you can give it off to Caleb Worcester, who has a 1.83 ERA, seven saves. He's just got such control, and he relishes in this ninth inning roll for the Huskies. But this all goes back to Ben Kasparius. It was his day. He just was a little bit better than Jonah Smith, Bob. 13 strikeouts, and then you hand it off to Justin Willis. You give it to Worcester. This bullpen is the top bullpen in the Big East. And I think Creighton's played well. They can't, they can't mope. They could easily face UConn again tomorrow the way they've played today. They got a tough savior team waiting if this does in fact close out. The one, two. Pat Winkle and that UConn dugout. They thought ball game. We play on, two and two. Worcester looking for the four out save and keep the shutout intact. Count goes full. Willis got the first two outs of the eighth inning. Worcester got the last. He's got two outs here in the ninth. Bounce it a third. Brown, ball game. In shutout fashion, the UConn Huskies will play for the Big East Championship on Sunday afternoon. A pitcher's duel deluxe goes the way of Connecticut. A three-hit shutout and a 2-0 victory, John. Creighton's offense found a way to get eight runs across on Thursday, and they drew 11 walks. In this game, they did draw three, but 13 strikeouts. 13 strikeouts by Ben Kasparius, an absolutely brilliant outing from someone who thought about going into the MLB draft and getting selected last year. Instead, Bob, he came back to UConn. Without having thrown a pitch in a UConn uniform, he said to himself, I love the coaching staff. I love this program. This is why you come back and you play college baseball. Kasparius was terrific, and the Big East Player of the Year, Kyler Fedko, continues to be as advertised with both runs batted in. An old school game where little things make the difference Kasparius was as good as it gets without throwing a no-no, and I thought that Kyler Fedko, when it mattered most, just lived up to his brand. The 13 strikeouts for Kasparius, that was very good. The bullpen follows, gets the last six outs cleanly, very good. And then the offense, well, they only needed two runs with the outstanding pitching. Fedko got him on the board in the fourth, with the solo home run, and then Fedko did it again, the fifth, with a sack fly RBI. When your pitching is as good as advertised, as good as it was this afternoon, two runs, that's all you need. And Fedko produced it, and the Yukon Huskies welcome back to the Big East. They advance to the Big East Championship on Sunday afternoon. All right, joining us now is Ben Kasparis. Why not? Talk to Big Ben, the, the right-hander. Congratulations, Ben. Um, when you took the mound today, the elements, the waiting game, not playing a game yesterday, were you in your mind? Was your arm ready for the challenge today? Um, you know, I'll never complain about another day of rest, but um, you know, it's a little tough. Like, it was 80, I think, the last couple days, um, and obviously elements played a huge role in today's game. And, um, no, we were ready to go. And it was an awesome experience, awesome day for us, and um, we're excited for tomorrow. Ben, John Fanta here. You strike out the side in the seventh inning. 
Then you sent a message to the Creighton dugout. Tell me about that. Yeah, um, I don't know. We read D1 Baseball and um, them talking about us being world beaters and this and that. Obviously, you know, with the COVID pause, we weren't able to get down to Creighton to play them, and we were trying our hardest to make up those games, and they kept dodging. Um, and it was awesome. It was um, it was good energy. I think it was uh, both both teams were going back and forth all day, and um, their pitcher pitched an unbelievable game as well. And um, we just came out on top today. You guys, be you're glad to be back in the Big East. I'll bet you're glad to be able to play teams. Nothing against your former conference, but I'll bet you're glad to have games like this, to have a rivalry like this again. Absolutely, um, and it was awesome. I mean, especially with this conference too. Uh, there's a lot of Northeast teams. A lot of my buddies are around the Northeast, so. It was a fun year, and um, we're not even close to done yet, for sure. Hey, Ben, it's Mike Schmaltz. I had a chance to notice your day here in the dugout. Your teammates came over several times to kind of pump you up through this game, Reggie Crawford in particular in the early innings. What's it like to know that your teammates are behind you in a lot of different ways, not just defensively? Yeah, I mean, I love these guys. They're, um, I would do anything for this team. I was, I was kind of bummed. I was at 120 pitches. I wanted to go back out there. Um, I think earlier on it kind of cost me a little bit, but um, – I wasn't staying in my legs too well in the first three innings, and then I kind of settled in. And um, you know, having guys have my back, it makes it a hell of a lot easier. And obviously, they play great defense behind me, and and that's how we came out on top today. Ben, this pitching staff, through two postseason games, has combined to allow just one run. What is it like being part of this staff? I mean, it's awesome. Coach Mack does a really good job, and um, it's a veteran staff, I would say. Everybody's everybody's really prepared going in, and we're getting used to being on the road. We spent the first five weeks traveling all over the country, and I think we're prepared for this, and I think we might be more prepared than any team in the country to kind of face those types of things. But um, it's been awesome, and especially because our, our offense prior to this game put up, I think, 10-plus runs um, in the last six games. It's good to see our pitching you know, just shut down, too, and, and give our offense some comfort as well. Ben, you did your part, and you did it well. Congratulations, and you, my friend, are in the Big East Championship tomorrow. Yes, Relish sir, it and you. enjoy it. That's Ben Kasparius. 13 strikeouts and two runs is all the Huskies needed to punch their ticket into the Big East Baseball Championship. That'll be tomorrow afternoon back here at Mason, Ohio. But we got more baseball today. It's double dip time. Later on today, 4 o'clock Eastern, join us on the Big East Digital Network. It'll be these same Creighton Blue Jays as they take on the Xavier Musketeers. The winner advances to that championship. And the team defeated will call it a season. For Mike in the dugout, for John sitting next to me, and all the fine folks here at the Big East, Bob Brainerd saying so long for now from Prasco Park in Mason, Ohio. Once again, the final, UConn wins the shutout over Creighton, two to nothing.